there are seven footballers who perfectly represent the seven heavenly virtues, and I will be going over them all starting with the virtue of humility. Humility is defined as the quality of being humble, characterized by modest behavior, selflessness, and the giving of respect. A footballer who has expressed these qualities is N'Golo Kante. N'Golo Kante is one of the most successful footballers of all time, winning back-to-back -back Premier League titles with Leicester City and Chelsea, and also boasting of a Champions League and World Cup title. Despite his numerous accolades and the immense fame that comes with being a world-class footballer, Kante has remained grounded and humble throughout his career, never viewing himself as more important than others. He never hesitates to take pictures with the fans and sign an autograph, attributes which have made him a fan favorite even amongst rival fans. During his time at Chelsea, Conte drove a second-hand Mini Cooper which he bought when he was at Leicester, and despite being on a €300,000 per week wage at Chelsea, Conte maintained his Mini Cooper refusing to buy a fancy car like his colleagues. In 2018, after a 4-1 home victory against Cardiff, Conte missed his train ride home. He then went to a nearby mosque in London to pray where he met an Arsenal fan by the name of Rahman, who invited Conte to his house with no hopes of him showing up. However, to his surprise, Conte showed up a while later at his house, where he played FIFA with Rahman and his brothers, and even ate dinner with them. He was on a protein diet so we had chicken curry, he even had a cup of tea, he beat us all at FIFA and then we watched match of the day, it was a really nice evening. This wouldn't be the first time Conte has had an encounter with a rival fan, he once apologized to an Arsenal fan. In 2018 after Chelsea defeated their London rivals in a 3-2 victory, Conte met the fan after the game who told him he was sad his team lost. To his surprise, Conte smiled at him and told him sorry. Conte's humility could be credited to his earlier years in football. Due to his smallish stature, people rarely gave him an opportunity. He was rejected from the famous French Clairefontaine Academy for being too small, and despite starting his football journey at 8, he would only manage to make his professional debut in the French second division at the age of 21 after coming on as a substitute in the last game of the season for Bologna where he played just 11 minutes. Due to limited opportunities on the pitch, Conte acquired a diploma in vocational accounting and was already starting to picture life away from football, however, Due to his hard work and dedication, Conte went on to become one of the best defensive midfielders in football. His harsh upbringing taught him the importance of humility and kindness to others. Despite leading a simple life, Conte made a huge investment in 2023 when he bought Belgian third division side Royal Excelsior Verton. It is safe to say Conte's humility has very much helped him to set the right priorities in life. While Conte is well known for his humbleness, the next player on my list is well known for being the opposite. However, the virtue that best represents him is diligence. Diligence is a virtue that describes an attitude of constant and earnest effort to achieve something, regardless of any distractions and pitfalls that may occur. A footballer who is well known for his relentless work ethic and dedication is Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo is arguably the greatest footballer of all time. He dominated football for more than two decades, playing at the highest level possible while getting better and better as he aged, even hitting his peak years in his 30s, a period where most players begin to show signs of decline. It is not a secret that Ronaldo's success and longevity are a result of his almost unnatural work ethic and dedication, putting in extra hours of practice and paying attention to the little details that most players ignore. Ronaldo's work ethic is driven by his obsession with being the best, a relentless pursuit of perfection and excellence. Ever once recounted how a casual lunch date at Ronaldo's house was unexpectedly transformed into an intense training session. Instead of enjoying a relaxed meal, Ronaldo insisted they head to the gym to work on their fitness. He said, let's go and having a lunch after training, go to his house, you know, he was few people on the table. So we have a food, quickly a lunch, and after that, he said, let's go in the garden and play two-touch. I said, Cristiano, we just finished. So we go playing two-touch, after that, let's go for a swim. <laughs> after that, let's have a sauna, jacuzzi. I was like, Cristiano, why you di we didn't stay at the training room? Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I said Cristiano deserves everything yeah. he got right now. He deserves because he works so hard and he's a machine. Ronaldo's obsession with being the best goes beyond football to every aspect of his life. He once trained so hard at tennis just to avenge a defeat against former teammate Rio Ferdinand. He, Rio beat him in front of everyone, so we scream, and Cristiano was so angry. He sent his cousin by a tennis table. After two weeks, he back and he beat he beat Rio in front of all of us. Yeah. So that's Cristiano Ronaldo. He don't want to lose any game. Growing up in Madeira, Ronaldo saw his father work two jobs to provide for the family: one as a gardener and the other as a kit man for Andorinha FC the club where he started his football journey as a kid. Seeing his dad work so hard taught him the importance of hard work and discipline, which has become hallmarks of his career. 
He understood very early in life that nothing was handed to you in life. You would have to earn it through hard work. You have to challenge yourself to be consistent. I repeat, sometimes it's hard. It's what many people say. Uh, you like to go to the gym every day. Of course, no. It's not true. Nobody likes to go to the gym every day. But you have to do it. It comes as no surprise that even in his late 30s, Ronaldo remains a formidable force in football, competing with the likes of Erling Haaland and Kylian Mbappe for the top scorer's spot. Ronaldo's remarkable longevity at the top of the sport is a direct result of his commitment to improving his skills and his refusal to accept anything less than excellence. As he enters the twilight of his career, he remains an icon and a role model for aspiring footballers around the world, a shining example of what can be achieved through hard work and determination. Talking about determination, the next player on my list was a late bloomer who never gave up on his dreams, and he is the footballer who signifies the virtue of patience. Patience is defined as a person's ability to tolerate delay or suffering without quitting. A footballer who it took a long while to make it to the top level is Jamie Vardy. Most modern-day footballers signed their first professional contracts as child prodigies who were nurtured in some of the best academies in the world, most times making their professional debuts as early as 16 and hitting their prime years in their mid-20s. Vardy, on the other hand, was a late bloomer who toiled his way up from non-league football to the limelight of professional football, becoming a professional footballer at the age of 25. At the tender age of 16, Jamie Vardy's dream of becoming a professional footballer was cruelly shattered when he was released by Sheffield Wednesday's Youth Academy. For a young boy whose entire world revolved around kicking the ball, this rejection was a devastating blow that he struggled to come to terms with. Lunged into depression, Vardy found himself unable to set foot on a football pitch for months on end. He lost his passion and drive, with his confidence shattered by the harsh realities of professional football. Through the unwavering support and encouragement of a close friend, Vardy was convinced to join the football team of a local pub, where he would compete in the local league against players who were far below his football ability. This backward step would ultimately prove to be key to Vardy's remarkable rise to stardom. Playing in the pub league allowed him to rediscover his love for football and rebuild his confidence. It didn't take long before he caught the eyes of scouts. He joined Stocksbridge Park Steel in 2003 in the 8th division of English football where he was paid £30 per match. He would combine playing football with working at a factory to make ends meet. Following a remarkable season in which he netted 50 goals across all competitions and helped his team secure promotion, Vardy made a move to FC Halifax in the seventh tier of English football. In his debut season, he continued his scoring form, netting an impressive 25 goals in just 37 appearances. His outstanding performances caught the attention of higher division clubs, leading to his transfer to Fleetwood Town in the Conference League. This would be the first time Vardy would stop working his factory job and focus solely on playing football. He would go on to score 31 league goals inspiring Fleetwood to the Conference League title and helping them gain their first ever promotion into a professional football league. In the summer of 2012, Vardy became the record signing for a non-league player when he signed for championship side Leicester City for a record transfer fee of £1 million. In his second season at Leicester, he scored 16 league goals which was crucial in the team's promotion to the Premier League for the 2014-2015 season. Vardy finally made it to the Premier League at the age of 27 and would go on to score his first Premier League goal in a man-of-the-match performance against Manchester United, scoring a goal and assisting four in a 5-3 win. The following season, his 24 league goals made sure Leicester overcame a 5,000-1 odd to win the Premier League. That season, he was named both the Football Writers' Player of the Year and Barclays' Premier League Player of the Season. He would also make England's squad for Euro 2016. Vardy's story becomes even more inspiring when you consider his impact on the Premier League. Despite coming into the league at 27, he holds the record as Premier League's 15th all-time goal scorer and managed to reach the 100-goal mark faster than Premier League legends such as Didier Drogba and Cristiano Ronaldo. He is also the oldest player to score 100 Premier League goals doing so in his 30s. Vardy's career is a true testament that delay is not denial. He proved that with hard work and patience, you can achieve whatever you set your mind to. Another way to achieve one's goal is through self-control, which is the major attribute of the next footballer on my list and he is the footballer who represents the virtue of temperance. Temperance is defined as moderation and voluntary self-control. A footballer whose self-control has been key in his rise to the top is Sun Hung Min. Like most child prodigies, Sun's entire football career was carefully crafted by his father from an early age. 
Sun's father Wang Zheng also tried his hands at professional football during his youthful years, but his dream never materialized, so he made sure his son achieved his dream of becoming a top professional footballer. Growing up father and son moment for son meant thousands of hours of gruesome practice on the field, learning the basics of football from his father. My father was a strict teacher he would punish me or yell at me if I did something wrong, but now when I think back I have to admit that that strictness had a strong influence on me. It may sound like an unorthodox way to raise a child, but it worked. Son has managed to stay on top of his game for a long time, thanks to his father's lessons, at the core of which is self-control and focus. Despite his immense success, Son has consciously stayed away from the extravagant lifestyle that often accompanies football stardom. He doesn't have a tattoo or piercing, and has stayed away from alcohol and even women. He plans not to marry till after he retires from professional football so as to give maximum attention to football. I just want to make sure I make everyone happy by playing at the top level for as long as I can to pay them back. You don't know how long you can play at the top level. When you retire, you can still have a long life with your family. Because of his abstinence and dedication to football, Sun has been a key player for Spurs for almost a decade now becoming the all-time top-scoring Asian player in the Premier League. Instead of indulging in sensual desires, he has remained dedicated to his craft, pouring his energy into honing his skills and performance on the pitch. The next footballer might be the opposite of Sun, but he is the footballer that represents the virtue of kindness. Kindness is defined as the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. A footballer who has a reputation for showing kindness to others is Neymar. It is hard to find anything positive about Neymar on the internet these days. His legacy as a footballer is now being clouded by this image of a playboy who didn't live up to his full potential, which is quite unfair considering the amount of joy and entertainment he brought to fans. Despite his vices, Neymar remains a very kind-hearted and genuine person and would most times go out of his way to make fans happy. Back in his earlier years at Santos, Neymar met a young boy who was battling cancer, they had a heartwarming moment together, and as a final wish, he asked Neymar to do his dance celebration when next he scored to which Neymar agreed. In the next game, Neymar scored and did the boy's celebration. Years later it was reported that the boy miraculously survived cancer. This wouldn't be the only time Neymar would go out of his way to uplift a child's spirit. In 2014 Neymar scored a hat-trick in a friendly match between Brazil and South Africa. After the game, a young South African boy invaded the pitch in a bid to meet his idol but was quickly intercepted by security personnel. Neymar intervened and took the boy to his teammate, where he was celebrated by the entire Brazilian team and took pictures with him, creating memories that would last the boy a lifetime. It comes as no surprise that Neymar has been an inspiration to children all over the world due to his positive spirit and kind-heartedness. So Neymar is your favorite soccer player? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes you cry when you see Neymar? Have, have, have you ever met Neymar? No. Now guess what? I know Neymar. So I told him about you. Guess what? Look right there. Look at that TV screen right there. Oi, Ariana. Tô aqui pra te mandar um grande beijo. Agradecer o carinho que você tem por mim. E dizer uma coisa pra você. Espero que você acredite no que você quer. Que vai em busca dos seus sonhos. Let me show you something now. Yep. He sent you a jersey, and he signed it for you. Although Neymar's kindness is rarely referenced these days, there is no doubt that he has a big heart and has inspired an entire generation of footballers with his unique talent and positivity. While Neymar is known for kindness, the next player on my list is known for being the perfect gentleman, and he is the player that best represents the virtue of chastity. Chastity is defined as self-control over things of sexual and sensual nature. A footballer who has shown self-control and has stayed faithful to his partner is Declan Rice. One of the pecs of being a football star is having access to extravagant and exotic women ranging from A-list celebrities to Instagram models. Most times these women are nothing more than mere trophies for these footballers with the relationship being nothing more than superficial, lasting just a few years or even months before the next cycle begins and this is where Declan Rice differs from the norm. Rice met his childhood sweetheart Lauren Fryer in high school when he was just 17 and they have been together for the past 9 years, welcoming their son Jude in 2022. Fryer has always been a pillar of support for Rice throughout his career, showing up at almost every game to cheer him on. In 2021, after England lost to Italy in the final of the Euros, Fryer took to her Instagram to support her boyfriend. You have done our country so proud, this tournament has been the toughest yet most incredible journey of your career so far, and I will never forget cheering you on from the very beginning. 
Rice and Fryer were pretty much a decent couple, and their relationship was very much under the radar, but everything changed when Rice signed for Arsenal in the summer of 2023. Going to a bigger club meant his personal life would be in the limelight of mainstream media. His girlfriend would however bear the brunt of their newfound attention as she was viciously targeted by online trolls who body shamed her for being fat and not wag material, a post on Twitter read. It is a shame Declan Rice has low standards, he makes 40k a day, is 6 feet and plays for one of the biggest teams in the world, but chooses to be with an unfortunate woman like that. Absolutely disgusting behavior. This would be one of many abusive comments targeted at Fryer, and as a result, she went on to delete all her pictures from Instagram. In a press conference, Rice would respond to the abusive comments towards his girlfriend reinstating his love and support for her, she is the love of my life, I don't need to upgrade. As a player who has been very successful and sure has the means to acquire as many exotic wags as he wants, Rice has chosen to stay faithful to the woman who was there from the start, before he acquired fame and money, his fidelity is exemplary, a true mark of a gentleman. Talking about exemplary, the next player on my list has also been exemplary on and off the pitch, and he is the footballer that represents the virtue of charity. Charity is defined as the voluntary giving of help, typically in the form of money to those in need. They have been no footballer who has been more charitable than Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane is a footballer who needs no introduction, he is a national hero in his home country of Senegal, not just for his footballing prowess, but also for his humanitarian effort. Like most African footballers, Mane was born into poverty in the village of Bambali, Senegal. As a child, he saw football as the only means to escape poverty and help his community, but his parent did not share his vision and wanted him to focus more on his education. However, at the age of 15, he ran away from his village to the capital city of Dakar, where he joined the Generation Foot Football Academy, from which he was scouted by FC Metz in 2011. He would go on to win the Champions League with Liverpool and inspire Senegal to their first AFCON title in 2021. Instead of living extravagantly, Manny used his newfound wealth and fame to better the lives of people in his community. In 2021, he financed the building of a hospital in Bambali, to which he donated 500,000 pounds, a life-changing gesture as there were no hospitals in his village. I remember my sister was also born at home because there was no hospital in our village. It was a really sad situation for everyone. I wanted to build one to give people hope. Manny also built a secondary school worth over 250,000 pounds in Bambali, and encouraged the youths to participate in education by rewarding the best students with laptops and a $400 cash gift. According to him, education is key to success. Education is very important. This is what will enable you to have a good career. To cushion the effect of poverty in his community, Manny also pays each family 70 euros every month. He is also reported to have built a stadium and provided internet access to his community. In 2018, Manet donated 300 Liverpool shirts, so people in his village could wear them during the Champions League final. Although Liverpool lost to Real Madrid, those with the shirts had cause to celebrate the following year when Liverpool lifted the trophy. Reflecting on his humanitarian efforts, Manet reinstated his priorities was to help better the lives of people. I don't need to show off luxury cars, houses, holidays and planes. I would prefer that my people receive a little of what life has given me. During the 2022 Ballon d'Or, Manet received the inaugural Socrates Award given in recognition of his humanitarian efforts. Myself, I'm really happy to be part of you guys tonight and I'm really happy to do what I can for, my, for our people and to, to make uh, maybe things better. Through his selfless initiatives, Manet has demonstrated a deep dedication to uplifting his community and creating lasting positive change. His humanitarian efforts have had a transformative impact on the lives of those in Bambali and serve as an inspiring example of using one's platform for the greater good.